Okay, so what we're going to do is our goal today is to determine the effectiveness of a com com commercial antacid, milk of magnesia. Okay, so milk of magnesia. And so then uh, what we want to see is we want to see um, that magnesium hydroxide, when it gets dissolved, it produces magnesium ions, which is not the part that we're primarily going to be concerned with, but also two OH minus ions. So hydroxide is associated with basic properties, okay? So then what we know is for every one mole of magnesium hydroxide, we're going to produce two moles. So this is a little stoichiometry of hydroxide ions. So then what we're going to do is we're going to neutralize. So we're going to take hydrochloric acid uh, and these hydroxide ions, so one mole of hydroxide ions. And when we do, we're going to produce neutral water and Cl-. So remember that hydroxide ion will come from two sources. It's going to come from the antacid and it's going to come from the base sodium hydroxide. So for every one mole of hydrochloric acid, we're going to neutralize one mole of hydroxide ions. Okay. So uh, Preston, do me a favor. Will you run up to that Erlenmeyer flask that's on the heater right now and turn it around and read me off what did I put as the mass of the tablet on that, um, the masking tape? What's it say? I think it's 0 .600. Okay, so 0 .600 grams is the mass of the antacid tablet that I dissolved. And then we're working with standardized one molar hydrochloric acid. You say one molar hydrochloric acid. For the very first time, you guys are going to understand what that M has always meant. Like if you look at anything that I work with in the lab, all these solutions have concentrations on them. What does molar mean? It means that I'm going to have one mole of hydrochloric acid per liter of solution. Okay? And then I'm also going to be working with 0.1 molar uh, sodium hydroxide, which means that I have 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide per liter of solution. Okay? So what we're going to do is right now we're going to take some initial and some final measurements of this hydrochloric acid. We're going to add a set volume and we're going to calculate out what the volume is. And then we're going to do the same thing for the sodium hydroxide, okay? All right.